Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, another unboxing. I know we've got goldfish, I know we've got bettas, I know we have some rare danios, we have epistogrammas, we have farlawalas, we have plecos, all kinds of cool stuff, but I'm gonna get started on it because the faster I get started, the sooner they get into a tank. What is this monster? You see this stuff? What did, what did we order that's giant? All right, here we go, box number one. Ooh, I like the person that does the short band. They make it easy for me. First up, we have some yo-yo loaches. Not bad. Little skinny and small, but we'll get some weight on them. A little bit of blood worms will fix that. Next up, we have an L264. That is the gray Sultan Pleco. One of my favorites. I need to get a group of these going, honestly. They they don't sell as well as like zebras and stuff like that, but I think they're every bit as cool. Next up we have red cap randas. Looks like four of those. Swim around. We're pretty low on goldfish, so we ordered uh, a decent amount, I think. Next up we have chocolate randas. Looks like just a couple of those little dudes. A little bit of shred fins in the bag, but we can repair that. We can rebuild them. Next up, we have some telescope eye, also known as kind of like the dragon, uh, dragon eye goldfish. Yeah, we'll put those all in a little pond because we're basically sold out of goldfish, so they can go straight out into a pond and get lots of water changes from Murphy's tank. Next up, we got the calico aranda. I like calicos a lot. I should just take these home. I can't, I can't. Keep taking everything home. So, I really like that guy though. That little one right there. I would take both those. Heavy black, I guess, I like. I don't know. Rosy loaches. These are a great nano fish. You can even breed them in only five gallons, which is super cool. Next up, we've got 50 cardinal tetras. Not bad. As you guys, if you've been watching any unboxings for a long period of time, you know we go through a lot of cardinals. And then we've got Brigitte Rasboras, also known as the Chili Rasbora. My, I think, well, one of my favorite nano fish for sure. I don't know if it's my absolute favorite, but they do like tan and water. It makes them color up red a little bit brighter. So that's box one. Let's get on to the next one. Next up, what is this? Okay, so I want to point something out. I think, and I can't know this for sure, but I think me unboxing these on camera, because I know most of the wholesalers that I order from do watch it, they now are putting this in the bag. So Robert ordered some, and I'm going, ah, oh, geez, here they're going to come in a cup again. But they're in bags. So it could be that we've made a positive difference just by doing the unboxings. I don't know that to be a fact. I'm not claiming that. I'm just excited to see that crown tail in a bag as opposed to um, a cup. Here's a little half moon. Not bad. As you saw maybe in the store tour or something a while ago, uh, we have a bunch of um, koi bettas in stock. And so we're trying to get a little bit more variety here in the store. Next up we have black diamond corays. Corydoras Hestatus, my favorites. Love them so much. In fact, Robert only was going under 12. I'm like, no way, let's get 25. I'm never sad to have extra of those in the store. What is this monster? You see this stuff? What did, what did we order that's giant? Oh my god. These are like full, full, well, not, I don't know about full, full grown, but these are the biggest uh, Royal Farla Wallace they've ever shipped. Those things are mammoth. Like, here, there's my hand, right? Like, they're, they're a solid six, seven inches. No joke. That's pretty cool, actually. They're going to look really big in only our 20-gallon sales tanks, but that's pretty rad. Next up, we've got Bloodfin Tetras. They look good. So this is, like you guys heard me say this before, this is one of the benefits of ordering, like, in the summer. Typically, they wouldn't ship that big. These guys are nice and full grown out. Um, you know, when they're... I guess shipping a lot more during the winter because more stores are busy, not just us, then stuff is naturally just smaller because the farms are selling more and there's less grow out time. So 
auto sinkless doing their thing what do we have here l66 what is l66 tiger king tiger plecos i think i'm pretty sure it's king tiger plecos but yeah i'm pretty sure someone will know i believe they're king tigers i like them meat eaters keep them warm next up we've got the blue eye and sisters so these are kind of like you would expect from an albino bristle nose except they have blue eyes kind of a cool thing it's nice to see you know animals with blue eyes as humans were naturally attracted to them more i don't know why but more blood fin tetras we got 50 of these things these things are gorgeous usually they come in so skimpy that was a good buy we'll have to order more like next week just to make sure we load up on these things they're good if you're watching this call the store see if we have them these are a good buy at the price i know we're going to sell them at the normal price so they're good but let me get into the next one. Ooh, look, my plants are purling. It's always fun. I, I enjoy watching plants be happy. Call me, call me crazy, but I enjoy it when they're purling and things are going on. These are just plants waiting to ship out, obviously. But uh, yeah, back to unboxing. All right, here we go. So, kind of a weird thing so far. They shipped the cups. I mean, I guess it makes sense because most stores want to keep the bettas in cups, but like, I don't. So this is just useless to me. I wish they would have kept them or something. Huh. But at least they're in bags now. Hey, we're moving. Like, we're moving in the right direction. So I'm not going to complain. Here we've got red and white orandas. Goldfish, in case you didn't know. They look good. I, I just love baby. I love goldfish, I think. That's, that's a problem. That's a problem. Next up, we've got some Bolivian rams. These guys don't have to be as hot as the German blue rams. Way easier to breed, way easier to take care of. Not quite as I, you know, color catching, but still nice. Ooh, these came in real nice. Epistogram Borelli Opal. They just have some really nice colors to them. Male and female. Ooh, I got the hiccups, look out. But they're real nice. I'm digging that. That was a good buy on Robert. Sometimes they come in real small. We won the lotto with those ones. It came in nice. Next up, we've got LG. So large epistogramma double red or epistogramma double reds, which means they're going to be Agazizii. I would say those are large. A lot of males. It looks like there's some girls in there. All right, that's another good buy. I'll I'll take it. I'm happy with those. Next up, we have Cory Pan Pan Cory Pandas. Cory Pandas, uh, Panda Corydoras. Looking to be doing their little Cory thing. Ooh, that one's eating a taco. I saw it. That's what you feed Corydoras. If you didn't know, by the way. Ooh, another another fiesta party in there with tacos with the Cory Pandas. Next up, Zebra Danios. Fifty of them. They're nice and big and healthy. Good. So every day you can say you can be happy about zebra danios. They're kind of they are what they are, but these ones do look good. I like those. Just thought I'd show you these real quick. Uh, part of the process we do when we're selling plants and stuff to you guys is we convert them. So this plant right here that looks weird is Vesuvius. Now when it comes into us, it's got all these crazy leaves that look nothing like Vesuvius because it's been grown out of water. All of these super cool leaves, which everyone wants in their aquarium, and it's making runners. Like, look at this plant. You, if you were to buy it, you get one, two, three, four off that one, five, six, seven, eight, right there. Um, but we have we convert it, or at least we start the conversion on it, and uh, you know that's just what we do because we have to. You know, looks like we have a reticulated hill stream loach down. Dang it! Don't know what happened to that guy, but yeah. So kind of weird plants, but. You know, if we were to ship this out to you with none of the new growth, you'd say we shipped you the wrong plant. And I thought we got the wrong plants when I originally ordered them like a year and a half ago or something like that. But um, it's true, they did convert. So that's how different they can look. And same thing happens with a lot of other plants. Like these right here, depending on how fast we're selling them, we've got water uh, wisteria right here. And, you know, these ones have grown out pretty well. But when they very first start out, they'll be the leaves will be like that. So you see how they're big, round leaves? Well, 
as they grow here at the, the store, they get the true leaf form that you're going to grow in your aquarium. So we get some bad reviews where people go, you sold me the wrong plant, or you, you know, it's dying off, and blah, blah, blah. The reality is those leaves that are growing out of water, just like this plant, they're all going to die off. And then you're going to have all this new growth. But they don't give it enough time, so they literally see some dying, and they go, oh, you horrible person. And the reality is you can't really supply that plant in the mass quantities where we sell you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds without uh, running into that problem. Even though we have disclaimers that we say, like, hey, they're partially going to be converted. Same thing is going on here. The more we grow it, we're going to get more pinks and stuff like that on this Pacopa. And then down low, the stem, the old leaves that look different, so you see how they're big and broad, up top, not big and broad. They're much skinnier. That's just the way that plant is. And a lot of plants are going to be that way. So... You know, and there's there's times we've got to put stuff through repair. Like we've got some uh, abuse here, so it's sold out online. Why? Because we've got some that needs to sit here for a while and get repaired. We've got dwarf baby tears here that's, you know, kind of just purling. We need to get the light up on this tank, so I'll be doing that before I leave today. Um, it's purling, but it's just not quite doing what we want it to do. And then over here, we've got a lot of crypts that we've pre-bought and we're converting over as fast as possible. All these big leaves are going to melt back again. And that's when they're turning yellow. So that's when people experience that crypt melt, if you will. Going to melt back down and then come back as the plant we want it to. And there's plants that don't really do that. Like Java ferns don't melt. Anubiuses don't melt. Uh, these are uh, red flame swords. The big leaves do melt back, but all the new ones are coming through and people don't notice it as much. Um, so yeah, that's you'll notice it a lot on the Amazon swords. The Amazon swords, all these big leaves die off, and then all these small leaves come back. And that's why we don't carry really big swords, because I'm going to sell you a plant that's going to die off. And then you go, you sold me this giant sword, then it died, and then I wasn't happy. So, all right, let me grab the next box, though. Here we are. Let's see what trouble we're going to get into in this box. We have a red crown tail betta. Looks good. I think it'll find a home. Next up, we have frogs. Twelve of them. Uh oh, we have one that is not doing well. He is not alive, so that's unfortunate. We'll have to make sure we get on that one ASAP. Remind me about that one, Jimmy. Next up, we have some paradise fish. If they slow down, looking good. Looking good. Robert wanted to take a gamble. We've been selling the albinos really well. I'm afraid they're just a summertime fish, but we'll see. So if you don't know, paradise fish are amazing alternatives to bettas. They will um, withstand not being heated and stuff like that way better than a betta ever would be. And they're anabantoids just like a betta, and they need about the same space requirements. So a little bit more aggressive, though. So if you're going to keep them with other fish, be on the lookout. So we've got some sunset honey garamis here. Looking good. As you can see, what do we order a ton of every week? Cardinal Tetras and Sunset Honey Grammys. They're just amazing. That, my friends, is a bag of snail poop. We have a, how many mysteries in there? Only 12. 12 mysteries make a lot of poop. That is no mystery. Next up, we have a Pizzagramma Fire Reds. So these are the Eggs Easy Eye Fire Reds. Looking good. Our Epistogramma game is going to be on point for a lot of people. Odessa Barbs. So the funny thing is we sell a lot of the same fish, and it totally depends on who's working. Like, obviously, the employees right now like a lot of Epistos and Odessa Barbs. There's 12 more Odessa Barbs. Whereas if, like, you don't have anyone who likes the Barbs, you sell almost none. Ooh, Panda Mary Gold Mollies. My weakness, my kryptonite. I want to get such a big tank of these going, but then once I have it, I'll be bored of them. I need like a 180 gallon filled with mollies. I don't know why. It's like a guilty pleasure. All right, one more to go. Let's get it started. All right. Looks like we got a couple of bettas. Yeah. Nice crown tail red and blue. And what do we have here? Like a teal half moon? Is that what it is? Come on. I can't. Yeah, it looks half moonish. Maybe double tail. It's got a split in its back to Yeah, it looks like it's split with a half moon with a split in it is what it looks like to me. There's a lot of water. What comes with so much water? Oh yeah, the Bar Barilius species. These are a Danio 
that are super cool. They don't look like it in the bag, but they're also expensive, but they are super cool. They get kind of orange and blue, like orange tint to them, blue kind of stripes or dark stripes. They're super active, um, kind of cool. It says 12 there, but I saw the invoice said I, we had nine. Hmm. Black Cooley Loaches. That's a good time. Nightmares are made of that. Next up we have red and white Ryukins. Ryukin. They look pretty good. i take them. I'd buy them again. What is this? Ooh, like a little like cellophane half moon betta. Alright. Put that over in the betta pile. Find those some homes. Then we've got black mollies. Got a soft spot for those too. I need to make a saltwater molly tank. Ooh, that sounds so fun. Then we've got red and black arandas. Looking good. I can't stop thinking about the black molly tank because I was thinking about... We gotta, we gotta go to selfie mode for this. I was thinking about the... Um, what do you call it? The live food culturing book by Mike Helwig. And there's a setup in brackish water or salt water where nerite snails, the eggs, you know how they're white and they don't hatch in fresh water. Well, in salt water, they do hatch, and then they have a larval state, and they stay at the top of the water. It's one of the best live foods for mollies. And I was just thinking about that interaction going, ooh, I would love to do that. But am I going to set all that up for some mollies? Maybe. Maybe. It does sound fun. Anyway, let's get back to this. We got one one bag left. That was your, your you know, sidetracked randomness. The last bag of the day is Geophagus Tapaho, the redhead cichlid. Not redhead, um, more of an orange, really. But they're an earth eater. So we're going to get these put away and uh, find some more trouble to get into. I know we're going to install some more tanks down here to add to our plant rack. So that's what we've got going on. i got a van filled with tanks, and that's the second half of the day now that once we get the fish put away. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. On the left, we have our latest video. Make sure you check that out. On the right, we have more videos lined up for you, which we think you'll enjoy if you enjoyed this video. Down below, we have the Jimmy of Aquarium Co-op channel. Make sure you check that out, and we'll see you in the next one.